16th July 1969 that was the date when apollo 11 mission landed on moon and neil armstrong became the first human to land on moon well you will be amazed to know that computer which they used in that mission had only 256 mb of ram or 256 megabytes of ram and they landed manned mission to moon and came back also imagine what computing power sits in your pocket right now i'm sure at least 1 gb of ram phone you must be having right so imagine how powerful your super smartphones are today than what it was then but with that such a small computer if they could go to the moon and come back imagine what is possible today with ai in biology so today we are going to talk about more or less 10 points 10 growth factors and applications of artificial intelligence in biology so that you are aware of what is the next phase of growth in biotechnology and how can you accelerate it how can you be a part of this tide this wave and earn a lot of money now first things first you have to know what i mentioned the first aspect is the computing power the computational power in 1969 it was hardly 256 mb of ram today the computing power is enormous and thanks to cloud computing and easier cheaper computing alternatives today a normal bioinformatics freelancer can undertake ai uh, ml projects from any part of the world thanks to the globalization thanks to increase in computing power and that is my first point ai in biology is going to go forward because of advancement in computing power now continued growth of computational power more sharing of computational power and enablement of more chips like what nvidia is building today there is a, a advancement in ai algorithm we are able to build a more advanced computer algorithm and that will help us analyze more biological data sets you will be amazed to know that at biotechnica right now we are undergoing 100 and today it's actually the 100th project we have undertaken under ai in biology for our clients at biotech so clients from all across the world are sending us projects today was the start of 100th ai in biology project in biotechnica we started this 6 months ago in 6 months we have got 100 projects imagine what is possible tomorrow if you learn ai in biology so the first factor which is going to propel the growth of ai in biology is advancement in computational now followed by that we are also seeing the integration of multi omics data now ai will facilitate the integration and analysis of multi omics data that is genomics proteomics and metabolomics it will help us provide a comprehensive understanding of the biological processes biology disease mechanisms so this integration of multi omics data into ai now is helping us propel the growth forward Now the third factor is personalized medicine. So as you have seen a lot of news of late about medicines in fact you have seen a news about vaccines also. So what happened in case of this uh, AstraZeneca vaccine or the medicines which we consume on a daily basis all these are one size fits all. But the truth is my body is different your body is different so obviously it may respond in a different way. And that's the reason these drug companies are today compensating cancer survivors or cancer patients in millions of dollars because their product caused cancer right why did it cause cancer because there is a need for personalized medicine but you cannot have personalized medicine unless you can customize it at scale can you build a paracetamol product which is customized according to me and then it is customized to you so according to the patient the drug is produced this can only happen at a mass scale if we implement ai in pharmaceuticals and that is where personalized medicine is driving the growth of ai in biology and drug discovery and that is my next point the fourth point is drug discovery development and repurposing of drugs so till date what we have learned we have learned that okay if in person you had to come from wherever whichever city you are and you want to come and meet me and have this conversation which we are going to have right now then it will take a lot of money right that's what wet lab is all about wet lab is all about you go to a lab spend lot of time energy chemicals and then finally one day 
after spending billions of dollars, you have one molecule which may also fail in the clinical trial. That's not a right way. It's like climbing stairs, 100 stairs to reach the top floor. That's not the right way. So what is the right way? The right way is we can do everything inside a computer. AI can significantly accelerate the drug discovery process and drug repurposing process by predicting potential drug candidates and potential applications of existing drug on the body. Environmental and lifestyle is today impacting our diseases and uh, the way we are getting diseases. And if we have that data and we feed it into the AI, we will be able to predict the disease risk. We will be able to predict the treatment process and we will be able to treat our patients in a much better way. And that is where drug discovery process and drug repurposing process can be accelerated using AI in biology. This is just one aspect of AI in biology. Now, the fifth point is related to the food we consume. No, I'm not talking about food technology. I am talking about precision agriculture. AI will enhance the productivity of our soil, not by using fertilizers, by using precision agriculture. You look at this. Again, in agriculture also, we have a one-size-fits-all. We water all our plants equally and we expect the results. What if we have precision farming? What if we predict the crop yields? We diagnose the and predict the crop uh, diseases in advance and we optimize our resource use like, you know, like the watering of the uh, crops and we also address the global food security challenges at the same time. What if we could do more of this? What if we could do aquaculture, vertical uh, farming based on the inputs which we receive from AI? What if we could real time have a dashboard to know which plant is going to die and so that we can rescue it? What if we could do all of this at scale? That is where AI in biology comes into picture. AI in agriculture comes into picture. And this is going to drive the growth of AI implementation in biology further. And the next aspect which is going to accelerate our AI in biology is synthetic biology. What if we could have synthetic organs, organs which are manufactured in lab and then used for multiple usages? What if we have AI-driven approaches that will enable us to design, develop and optimize synthetic biology systems? What if we could create new biological-based materials, energy sources and therapeutic agents? All of that is possible when we combine the power of AI with our synthetic biology. So it is like you go to a kitchen and you have everything but you don't have the math stick. Can you cook? No, you cannot. The same way, AI is that math stick which, which can cook a delicious food no matter which field we go. And that is why I am telling you very, very clearly, if you are learning AI in biology, you are going to be a growth creator for others. And that is why Biotechnica has the AI in biology training program, AI in biology paper publication, project, research projects, and you can undertake them. You can get experience letter, you can get recommendation letter and you can also publish papers in top journals. So what are you waiting for? This is the right thing to do right now. Now the next factor which is going to accelerate our AI in biology is environmental monitoring and conservation. What if we could monitor and manage the ecosystems across like Western Guards, Eastern Guards, whatever we have, the forests in Kerala by analyzing data from various sensors which we are receiving. So, which will give us insights into tree health, soil health and the ecosystem. What if we could gather data from not just sensors but drones and satellites to de detect environmental changes which can be a threat to our biodiversity. Imagine, we could save so many of forest lives, the wild animals, right? So, that is where AI can be implemented and this we call it as, proudly call it as environmental monitoring and conservation. We have, we do have a project on this also undergoing in Biotechnica for a government of, I'll not disclose which government, but we do have a project happening in Biotechnica on this. The next one will be healthcare diagnostics. What if we could create an AI-powered tool that will provide faster and more accurate disease detection? So for example, if I know that my father got diabetes at the age of 55, so what exactly contributed to his diabetes? What if all those data could be fed into an AI system 
which could predict at what age based on my BMI I might get diabetes. What if I could prevent diabetes altogether by changing those factors? What if AI could tell me all of this in advance, 10 years or 15 years, 20 years in advance so that I can postpone lifestyle diseases? Healthcare diagnostics is the next big thing. And a lot of companies are going to come in. Already we have a lot of companies right here in Bangalore, I know of, which are doing this, right? So AI in healthcare diagnostics is one next big thing which you should look out for. The next one which we are looking at is biomedical research. So we are seeing AI now assisting, helping us uncover new biological insight by analyzing vast amount of research data which is available with us. We are able to identify patterns and generate hypotheses for further investigation. What if the pacemaker which was implanted into a patient, all of that data we could analyze and feed it into a machine learning algorithm and find out a pattern that, okay, when did this pacemaker fail? Why did it fail? How can we build better biomedical devices? That is where AI will come handy. So now, of course, these are the ten, nine points which I told you. The tenth point is very important. If you learn AIML in biology, you can become a teacher of AIML in biology. You can train the next generation of developers. You can go and train IT people in biology. So I'll give you an example. Right now, I have got a student. He is an IT professional with 20 years of experience. His existing salary itself is 24 lakhs per annum. And he told me, sir, I want to learn biology, AI in biology, so that I can laser focus on this part of the AI and then I want to develop solutions because I know nobody in IT can do this. I want to learn it. So he's learning AI in biology right now with us. Right. You can learn AI in biology and you can train other IT professionals AI in biology. So these are the 10 factors which are going to propel, which are going to push forward the AI in biology field. This is a new field. This is the upcoming field. And why it will be in demand in the future? Because it saves money. It saves, saves real money for real people by doing what they were doing earlier outside the computer, inside the computer. So it makes sense, right? You traveling to Bangalore, sitting with me for one hour, listening the same story would have costed you at least 10,000 rupees. But today, it can be done free of cost. We just spoke, right? So that same way, what if we could apply and make pharmaceuticals, make biology easier? That is where revolution begins. Biotechnica is all about revolution. We are doing 100 plus AIML in biology projects as we speak for our clients. And I want you to do that. I want you to publish papers in AI in biology. I want you to become an expert in AI in biology. So the link is given in the description about the AIML in biology course. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at Shekhar at Biotechnica.org. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon as an AI in biology expert. Take care. Bye. Thank you.